In today's video, I want to give you my thoughts on my Aquatech housing, which I use for my Sony a7 III when I take it underwater. I'm going to be showing you some of the photos and footage that I've actually taken with this camera and give you my initial thoughts. So before I switched to the Aquatech housing, I used to use the Seafrogs housing, which is about a third of the price of this one. But I had some problems with some water leakage with that one, so that's why I decided to switch to this more expensive version. And ever since I switched to the Aquatech housing, I've not had a single problem with water leaks. And I feel a lot more confident taking my camera underwater. So my main use for this camera setup is filming marine animals while snorkeling and freediving. And I always shoot pretty close to the surface where there's plenty of light, so I don't use any external strobes or other lights. And this has, housing is only usable up to 10 meters anyway, so if you're planning on going scuba diving with your Sony a7 III, then I would recommend getting a different case. With this housing, you get plenty of control of the buttons of the a7 III. You get access to pretty much all the buttons and wheels on the front side of the camera. The on off button, the C1, C2 and the wheel on the top you don't get access to so you have to preset these before you go underwater and put the camera in the housing. Because you can't switch the top wheel I usually have my camera on the S mode so that the F value is on auto. And then I have the ISO and the shutter speed on the front wheels so that I can adjust them underwater if I want to. Next, I want to show you some of my favourite photos I've taken with this setup. The whole of last year I spent at some remote islands in Japan, so I had lots of opportunities to take this camera setup underwater, and I got a lot of pictures of some wildlife, so I will show you some of those and the settings that I used to take them with. In general, I start with my camera settings around ISO between 200 and 1000, shutter speed between 250 and 1000 and the f value is set on auto and i'll change these slightly depending on the condition if it's cloudy or overcast but when i'm underwater it's a little awkward to change the settings too much and also the animals come and go very fast so i don't really fiddle with the settings too much once i'm actually in the water also if i know beforehand i'm going to be filming animals that are moving fast like dolphins then I'll have my shutter speed set up to a bit faster, so maybe 1 over 1500 or 1 over 2000. And I pretty much always have my camera on burst mode so that I can hold down the shutter when they come in. And I'll take about 20 to 30 photos of one sequence. And then after I come back, I'll choose the best photos out of the set and edit that one. this Sony a7 III setup, I'm really happy with how it performs for the photos. If you're just going to be shooting videos with this setup then I might not recommend it as much. As the Sony a7 III you can only film in 4K with 24 frames and if you film in 24 frames you're not going to be able to switch to slow motion so you're going to get, so you're going to get a lot of unstable footage because underwater there's a lot of waves and movement. So the only way you can get smooth looking shots is to film in 120 frames but for that you need to set it to 1080 so for videos I wouldn't recommend this camera as much. For the video settings I usually film in 120 frames and 1080p and then I slow down the footage in post. I think that is going to be it for this video. Thank you so much for watching and please like and subscribe if you haven't already and as always I will see you in the next video.